Hi, my name is Anahi Brown. I am an empowerment coach and welcome to the Online Prosperity Show. I am a coach and I support women in reclaiming their dreams, uh, redefining and regaining a purpose, everything through the lens of self-care and nourishment. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the women empowerment coach herself, Anai. Anai, how are you doing, my love? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you so much for making the time to be on the show today. And if you're watching this uh, segment right now, I want you to know that Anai is an empowerment coach and she empowers uh, women especially to make the dietary changes that... Um, best for your needs and taking into consideration your goals, your lifestyle, and all the unique requirements that you might have. So together with her, you can work to creating a happy, healthy nourishment style that is sustainable, fun, and rewarding. She did, however, tell me it's not only about food and it's not only about the way you look or the way you approach life. There's so much that goes on into empowering your mind, body, and soul. So that's the reason why we brought her here so she could tell us all about that. Now, Anahi, I could go on and on, but you're here to tell <laughs> us what, what it is that you actually do. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you got started on this journey. So basically, I was always very overweight. Um, growing up uh, back in Venezuela, I was always um, struggling with my weight. And not just from the sense of um, health-wise, but also because I felt like I couldn't fit in. I wasn't enough. Under all that shame that I had around my body, it was a sense of not enoughness, you know. If only I was thinner, taller, more beautiful, you know, then I could have worth, right? What happens is that when I was around 25, I started um, dating the man who is now my husband. And in through this um, relationship, I started to heal a lot of things that had to do with how I saw myself. I was also having a really good career. I was feeling better. And I started prioritizing on losing weight. Suddenly it was like, I have done this many times. I have done all the diets. I even had liposuction at some point. You know, I had done everything. Peels, diets, magic potions, I did it. Um, and I was done. But I, I, I made a commitment to myself. I said, I am, I always had like a timeline. If only I can lose 10 kilos in three months, then I will be, you know. And this time I said, no, I'm committing myself to being healthy. And I don't care if the weight goes off. I'm going to keep pushing until I feel better about my body. However, it wasn't a full shift. There was a lot of still um, weight related shame and, and, you know, and, and fears around that. But at least I started shifting things. I stopped rewarding me, myself all the time with food. I started exercising, you know, the, the, the typical story. And even though it was really hard at the beginning, I didn't lose anything. In fact, I, at some point I had a massive meltdown where I was like, I can't believe I'm doing all this and the weight is just stop. Um, I should stop. Fortunately, I said, you know what? No, I'm going to keep pushing. And eventually I did lose almost 40 kilos. What happened was that because I didn't heal here or here, so I look fantastic. Um, I got, within that period, I got married uh, in a super small, beautiful dress that was, you know, I look like an angel. However, I remember putting on the dress on my wedding day, the day that you should feel, you know, beautiful and glowing and stuff and saying, I should have lost two more kilos. So, um, fast forward a few months later, I'm pregnant with my first son and I kept the weight very well. But as soon as uh, my son was born, um, my thyroid went crazy and I gained 12 kilos in six weeks. It was bizarre. Suddenly, not only I wasn't getting my body back, you know, as you should, I was out of control and I wasn't eating and that spiraled out with other complications, spiraled down in me developing um, postnatal depression. But at this point, I was also graduating as a wellness coach. So again, that sense of worth that was based on my way because I haven't done the real work inner work to heal that was not just back and trigger it was heightened because suddenly i'm like who is going to believe me to tell them what to eat when i'm fat 
you know, when I'm failing as a mother, I'm failing as a human, da -da 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 -da. it was a very toxic moment. Um, eventually, I did work with someone who helped me deal with the postnatal depression and all the fears and all the anxieties happening there. And I start seeing clients and slowly and steadily I start to heal. But again, my weight was always the thing. My weight was, I, I, I tell my clients, we all have self-destruction buttons that put us back into our factory setting. Our factory setting is basically the last safe place that our reptilian brain at the back of our head knows as home. For me, attacking me on my weight is that home. It's a discomfort zone that I live in for so long that I have to actively work to dismantle. So, um, I started working, I learned about mindfulness, I learned about brain development, I, I, I continue studying and I started to challenge my own beliefs. I started to challenge them, not in the sense of who will want to work with me when I'm fat, but who will want to work with me when I'm not loving myself, when I am not um, caring for myself. How am I gonna tell another woman, looking at, at her in the eyes, try this, it's gonna work, when I am full of, rubbish. I am not doing it. You know, I am attacking myself. I am looking at myself in the mirror and going, ugh, 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 this ugly lie, right? So then I actually started healing that. And um, last year, two years ago, I started a training um, on relational coaching based on mindfulness. So it's a mindfulness-based integrative relational coaching program. And what kept coming back to me from this theory, which is beautiful theory developed by, a, by an amazing woman called Monica Mancilla um, was that whenever we work on relation thing, relationships at the bottom, the core always feeling the pain was the self, the relationship, the, mo the, the tightest relationship we have, which is how we relate to ourselves, right? So I kept thinking, oh my God, this, this, this feels right. There's something about this theory that is just clicking in my head. And I kept working on it and polishing it. And that's how my whole approach came. Basically realizing that how we relate to uh, food, to our bodies, to God, to our spouse, to our children, to our job, to our purpose, to everything. It's tightly related to how we relate to ourselves, how we see ourselves. In fact, one thing that I now tell my clients a lot is that um, the voice and the message that we put in God's mouth, it's the closest of how we talk to ourselves. So when we think God is there judging us and he's telling us that he's ashamed of us, it's because deep down this is how, what we tell ourselves. We think that we are in the wrong and so we just give that message to the highest power that we have, which is, you know, a deity or, or the universe or something, you know? Um, and the same goes with food. The same goes with everything. So when we slow down and nourish that core, like if we were nourishing a baby, you know, and we just take the time to say, what do you need? What, what, how can I serve you? And we start to, through self-care and self-worth work, we start to show up for ourselves and for our needs, whether those are bodily or mental or emotional or spiritual needs. First, we start to create a relationship, a real relationship with ourselves. So we start to trust better and more. Second, we know ourselves. We begin to know and we're like, no, you know, this really, this isn't me throwing a tantrum or this isn't me being difficult. I am really struggling with something. But also, then how we relate to the, to the world is different because now we're not constantly thinking that we are under threat. We are constantly loved. And we know that no matter what happened, no matter whether the weight goes or not, the job plans or not, the husband comes in or not, the boy or the girl is born or not, we are infinitely worthy. So we, are, we stop trying constantly to, to earn the cookie, you know, the, the, the cookie point or the gold star or, you know, or the, that extra edge. There's no tap keeping. It's just us with ourselves saying, and you're worthy. You mess it up and you're worthy. And you gained 10 kilos on your last holiday and you're worthy. And you didn't train because you fell asleep and you're worthy and, and you're worthy and you're worthy and you're worthy. And in that process first, especially for women, we begin to realize that we have a voice that is worthy to be heard. 
and that we start to challenge every message that had told us our dreams don't matter, you are just a mom, you are just a this, and then we start to say, no, wait a minute. Not only am I worthy, but all my life I wanted to, I don't know, create a shelter for lost turtles in, I don't know, you know? And then we start working towards that because we know that if we fail, we're worthy. If we succeed, we're worthy. So it's easier to show up in a world where in the core, you're cool, you're cool, yeah, you're safe. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for that elaborate uh, introduction. Now, Anai, you keep uh, repeating one fundamental um, aspect in the stuff that you're talking about, self-awareness. How important is it in the kind of work that you actually do? And also for the people that are watching to ha have that relationship with knowing who exactly they are, what they want and what actually empowers them. I think self-awareness is key because we go through life disconnected. You know, we are thinking, we're no longer human beings, we're human things. You know, we're, we are here all the time. We detach from our heart and from our body. So the detachment from our heart is in the sense of labeling good emotions and bad emotions. Oh, this is not a good emotion. So I'm not going to engage in that. Or over like letting the emotions overflow ourselves instead of processing them. So we are not even aware of what is happening. And then in our bodies, how many times have someone that you know been running with this call or with this illness and just dragging it and dragging it because we don't trust our bodies to slow down and say, you know, in a culture that is always clapping and, and cheering for busyness and for, oh my God, I'm so stressed disconnecting from our bodies is the only way to go however if you want more if you truly want to live your life you need to have self-awareness of what's happening in my body like one thing i always tell my clients you will chart your cycles you need to know where you are with your hormones you need to know like i i, I tell people you know i don't know if i have any allergies they tell me and i'm like what do you mean you don't know if you have any allergies well, you know, I sometimes I eat and I get bloated or I get, you know, I have the area, but it's normal. I'm like, oh, no, 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 it's not. <laughs> it's not normal. Depending on pepto and, and, you know, and, and stuff, it's not normal. But we dis detach because we are doers, we are thinkers, we now are accomplishing. So I cannot slow down because my diet is making me sick all the time. I cannot slow down because I have a migraine for six months. I cannot slow down because I have a lump here or there. I cannot, I can't, I don't have time for that. Until we do, because suddenly we are in a clinic or we are facing surgery. And then we have all the time in the world because we needed to slow down. So self-awareness, first of all, it creates trust. We begin to trust ourselves. How can you get good ideas? Or, you know, how can you achieve that, that six-figure business that you want to achieve? When you don't trust yourself enough to know that you need to rest, that when you fall asleep in the middle of traffic, that's a big alarm that you need to rest, you know? Or when you dread that workout, it's because your body's telling you something. It's not because you're a lazy bum, but it's easier to say, to talk back to ourselves. It's easier to say, oh, you do you, you this or you that, than say, why am I experiencing this and that is why self-awareness is important because it suddenly just brings you back oh god am i hurting am i sad what's happening you know absolutely thank you thank you so much um for for that now you did mention that in this um you know modern world we are all very busy and you know we try to juggle a lot of things um, we want to stay connected on our mobile phones and that causes a lot of stress um either stress in relationships or stress at work or just stress 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 now can you um m maybe explain do you think that uh stress can actually cause people to overeat oh yeah of course, we self-medicate with different things and stress is a disease. So we will self-medicate with a cookie or we will withhold food because that's the other thing. Sometimes when we are so stressed, if one of the elements of stress is feeding in this body that we think we need to have to be worthy, we will withhold food, you know? 
Um, stress causes us to not being able to engage in the present moment because we are constantly looking for the threat, right? We are constantly in our reptilian brain. We cannot bring it front. We, we are very, very poor versions of ourselves when we are stressed. And the worst part is that most of us are so wired for it. We are so addicted to it that we don't want to change. I have, I have clients that are high achievers and I tell them, who are you? when you are not busy and they're like panicking. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm not busy. I have to be busy. I have to do something. But that's when the, the next question will be, why? Why are you stressed? Okay, so let's say we have a single mom, mom of two. She's very busy. And, and okay, so why are you busy? Well, you know, I'm a single mother. I have to support my kids. Fine. What can, what can you let go? What, what is one thing that you can let go of right now to, to liberate a little bit of space? No, no, you know, no, no. I can't, I can't, everything is important. Is it really? Is it everything important? Sometimes it's about adjusting our expectations and making them ours because for example, let's say that, that, that Mary, the single mom of two, she says, you know, I go to work, I, can, I pick up the kids, I come home, then they have extracurricular activities. Are they really that important? Yes, because that will make them, help them get to Harvard. Can you afford Harvard? You know, can you? Like it's, <laughs> What can, what can drop? Like, for example, for me, I'm a mom of two. I live in an expat country. So my support network is basically my living nanny who we co-parent our kids together. My husband is also very hands-on. But he's not hands-on because something happened and there was a magical unicorn that touched him and he became hands-on. He's hands-on because I set a bar of, we are co-parenting these kids together. So 50-50 you know, when I have to work, I have to work. When you have to work, you have to work. You know what I mean? And then what can give? What can be dropped? Oh, 13 different extracurricular activities. We're dropping them. Right. Going to, you know, taking them to these piano lessons that they hate. We're dropping them. Because my priority is me. Because when I'm good, then, then things change. I, I also drop things for my life. Like I am... As social as I am, I don't go out most nights. Why? Because sleep is important. I wake up very early, then I go to bed. But, you know, it's, it's about reminding ourselves that we get to choose. We get to choose how our life looks like. It's not like someone throw the life at us and, and we're like stuck with it. We get to change things. Like yesterday I was listening to, I went to a, a breast cancer awareness event and there was a survivor and she was saying, we don't think that when we are facing cancer, we get to choose, but it is our body and we get to choose. And if a woman facing breast cancer get to choose her treatment or say no to treatment, every single human being can choose. Absolutely. You can either choose the way you approach it mentally and emotionally. You can choose what you accept. You can choose where you put your no's and your yes. You can choose all the time because the reality is that even that sing, like single mother of two, if she want to, she can walk away. Right. Absolutely. Now, I know you, say. absolutely. You're bringing up very interesting uh, concepts really about, um, you know, life and how you help other people to be empowered. You mentioned, um, you know, during your second answer there that uh, sleep is important. Do you think that the lack of sleep um, or low energy prevents people from showing up um, as their best or moving as they would like to? Yes. Oh my God, yes. I think that sleep is the most underrated um, pill solution potion we have. How many of us go to bed with a phone and just kind of like, <laughs> you know, all the way to closing our eyes. Where, Sleep is so key. Sleep, I'm going to tell you, I believe sleep changes diet. If, if, if someone can make one positive, big, massive change and they don't want to touch their food, they're like, I'm going to keep on eating whatever I want. I will say then sleep properly. Sleep, it's so important. It lowers our cortisol. It helps our brain heal. It helps your digestion. It helps you detoxify. It's key and we do not sleep enough. Or... Uh, we have very poor quality and quantity of sleep. We don't sleep enough. And when we do sleep, we sleep normally with a screen close by, with a lot of blinky lights. We are, you know, we don't, 
we don't see sleep as a ritual of self-love. Absolutely. There's a lot of concepts of self-love, self-care, and self-awareness in, in all the stuff that you're talking about there. Now, if somebody is really intrigued about, you know, what, what it is that you're talking about and they're probably feeling numb and, um, you know, just maybe bloated or not really energetic in life and they want to speak to somebody, um, what's the best way that people can get a hold of you there, Anai? Well, they can go to anahibrown.com slash purposeful and they can download my free ebook which is a, a guide to creating your greatest life and once you download it you will have um, access to me so you will get a free 30 minutes talk to me with me basically um, where we can talk about where they are and where do they want to go to so this is the type of um, sessions that give me a good idea of where the person is and how can I support them and then we can talk about um, working together I do have a couple of offerings coming um, I'm finishing my first um, 30 day challenge and it's a self-care uh, program for busy women and that's going to be relaunched by mid-November um, early December but if, if, if they just um, go to my page and leave me their um, email, they're going to know everything that's happening. Um, there's a lot of fun, 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 exciting things happening. And they can always follow me on social media. So on Instagram and on Facebook, I am anahibrown.coach. And whenever someone sends me a message, I am the one answering. So yeah, that's how they can have more of me. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that offer. Now, when somebody shows up and you speaking to them normally on that 30 minute, um, you know, coaching call, um, not all people are the same, but maybe you've got one sort of, uh, general piece of advice that you normally give to people if they're, you know, feeling unfulfilled or, you know, their self-worth is leading them to the fridge to open up that tub of ice cream <laughs> so that they can self medicate what do you just normally what's your normal go-to advice uh, for women that are going through that slump in their life um the first one will be prioritize self-care self-care is how we fall in love with ourselves again and from then everything else will happen so yes i will i will say that that's the best place to start absolutely right so just putting it in in, in perspective there um women usually feel the urge to want to serve and help others, uh, especially like you are a mom and you're a wife and you also are running a business, you know? Some people would find it to be very selfish to give off themselves first. Um, you know, well, what's your antidote to that? Well, first is a challenge. The, the reason why they are earning you know good girl points by serving others is because they don't feel worthy so if we start realizing that and say oh okay so the reason why i'm doing all these nice things for everybody is because i'm trying to buy love but i don't need love i have love within um so the first that will be obviously my first you know insight and then it will be okay so how can we start seeing you as the maker of all these changes and the doer of all this goodness and then that becomes your priority because a mother who burns herself so much on all, every aspect, she won't be able to mother anybody. So when we say self-care is unselfish, self-care is about you saying, when I'm strong, everyone around me is strong. So I need to put in the time. And sometimes self-care can be as simple as saying, um, I'm gonna order a pizza and you guys are gonna watch a movie while mommy's gonna read for one hour. You know, when we think self-care, many times we think it has to be a retreat in the Bahamas and all this money and I don't have money and I don't have a nanny, what am I going to do? Sometimes self-care is about waking up half an hour earlier or half an hour late. It's simple. It's how can I give to myself now? And maybe I can give to myself now by, again, handing out iPads around the house, opening a bag of chips and getting my own iPad and watching something like your show. I'm going to watch one episode and this is how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show up for myself today. Or maybe it's going to be about getting everybody on their bikes and, you know, biking for a bit if the weather is good. You have to define it for yourself. But when you see it as the priority that feeds the whole family, 
the whole world, it's a whole different ballgame. Absolutely. Absolutely beautiful. Now, if you're watching this, you would actually uh, get an inclination of how working together with Anahi would leave you um, having a happier existence, you know, because the things that she would look at is all the parts of your life that affect your health, your wealth, your joy, and how working with your nutrients, emotions, and stress management habits. And we also did talk about sleep that can actually heal you holistically and so you can live a kick-ass life that you deserve. I will be putting in the details of how you can get in touch with Anahi in the show notes be below. Now, Anahi, I can't thank you enough for the time and the level of expertise that you showed uh, on the show today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay.